it says in the Shema, which we read when we put on film, you should love the Lord with your whole heart. There is love, and then there's also awe. Awe, fear. People think fear, oh, God's going to make me fry and sizzle in hell. We don't, that's not serving your God, that's serving yourself. You're afraid you'll get fried and sizzled. We're talking about awe and love. We focused a lot more on the love. But there's also respect for this awesome God who created us, who sustains us, who takes care of all of our needs. He created us in a world where it seems like the way the world exists is by science, CEOs, and where God is concealed. He wants us to come to the world and say, no, God makes things happen. He created some cracks in this veil. The cracks were the exodus of Egypt. The cracks are the miracles that we see from time to time, showing us, I'm in charge. I thought it would work out. Look, it worked out. You have to go to work. It's Yom Kippur. It's Shabbos. God created the world, and He told us He'll take care of things. Shabbos, close. So we are demonstrating to the world that God is the Creator. That was our mission. And we do that by doing the mitzvot, where the world is screaming, what do you mean you're taking off two days in the middle of the week? It's a holiday. you got to feed your family. God will feed my family. We will do what we, what, what we can. And God will bless the doings of my hands. Speak to any people that are in business. They could work three months or six months on a project, and it comes up with You could have a couple of phone calls, and God blesses it, and there's mana to eat. So that's the job of the Jew. Is the Jew's relationship to God different than the Gentile's relationship to God? In what sense? Different? Any sense. Is there a difference between the relationship of a king to his son or to his entire nation? I'm required, according to Jewish law, to educate or pay someone else to educate my son. That's an obligation that I have to, a king has to all his subjects, but first to his own son. That's a good example. Exactly. We say in the prayer, God, you, we're the chosen people. Many people say that saying we're the chosen people causes anti-Semitism. It's not the case. The biggest anti-Semitism was in Germany, correct? The Holocaust. It's pretty big. What happened over there? There it was, was a movement. It was insanity, though. It was insanity. But wait a second. In that same country, with the movement of Moses Mendelssohn, who said, be a Jew inside and be like everyone else outside, we try to fit in, that's where anti-Semitism starts. Anti-Semitism starts when you don't take your job seriously. When you go to people and say, we're the chosen people, and we have 613 commandments, you only have seven. You're not commanded to do more. We have a very special relationship, like the heart is very sensitive as the rest of the body, and there's the heart, the heart is very sensitive. You can't walk on your heart. I mean, the, the, everyone has their job. We were chosen to be the ambassador of God to the world. We have to teach the world, and there's a very strong relationship of God and the Jewish people, but there's God's relationship with every single human being. Every single human being was created in the image of God. But there's a very unique relationship that God has with His children. It's not only entitlement for God's children, it's responsibility. A lot of responsibility. So when a color general comes with metals saying, I put my life on the line so many times, does anyone get jealous? Is there anti-Semitism towards the general? Thank God we didn't have to be in the front lines. But if you have all those color things and you're 
eating the lobster and everything <coughs> else like everybody else why are you chosen you're eating just like us but and I, I'm, I'm not saying that the reason for the Holocaust no one understands the Holocaust but God himself he will explain it to us when the Messiah comes I'm just saying it's ironic that it started there but anti-Semitism is to remind us of our purpose we shouldn't get comfortable we're not like everybody else I asked you earlier if you had instructions for a novice Let's pretend now that the novice is a Gentile. What instructions would you give them? Novice is... A newcomer, a beginner. If the novice is a Gentile, I would tell them like this. You were commanded by God, Mount Sinai. There are seven Nohad laws. laws from God for the entire universe start keeping them should I enumerate them? please they are the three cardinal Jewish sins which are murder uh, adultery and idolatry hunting for fun blaspheming God, cursing him, stealing and maintaining a justice system those are very important believe in God don't steal from other people the Rebbe in the early 80s wanted to initiate in all the public schools a moment of silence from 9 till 901 a child should know he should think about God and we have to bring God to the world because if you don't have God then why shouldn't you still why shouldn't you do anything what brings you pleasure. As a policeman, you'll outsmart him. I have a friend who's a public school teacher who in the 80s told the Rebbe that he, he did it in his classroom. And people stopped stealing pencils, started hurt, stopped hurting each other. So the Rebbe said, I knew it's going to help. So I would tell these people, start praying to God daily for your needs. And do these laws Le live this way and you could pray anything you want sound any prayer you want just pray to God and live and, and live a meaningful life how many families are there in your congregation in this neighborhood is 20,000 Jews so there's 20,000 members in my congregation every Jew is a member of this congregation. how many of them pay your dues we don't have dues. How do you collect revenue? We have uh, donations. It's private donations. From the members, you give as much as you can to support what you want, what you can. How many of them donated to you in the last 12 months? Uh, close to 150 from locally. Great. That's the answer to the question I was asking. <laughs> but we have hundreds of people at events. Lighting, there is no way. How many to How many men come to a minion on a? We could have Saturday from forty to one hundred and fifty people. And also, we have six other branches. Anyways, I'm sorry, I don't count. No, that's fine. But they're they're, they're 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 not local. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even Folsom or Davis are pretty far away. Yeah. Are you of service to the to a community in any way other than your employment as rabbi of this congregation? I help everybody. What do you, I understand your question. For instance, one service that my father used to give to this community before his dementia developed is he was the Jewish member on the Interfaith Council. Another thing that he has done, and I helped once, uh, was uh, we serve food at loaves and fishes. Those might be examples of other ways of service. I, I have people, a lot of people that are not of our faith, that I'm like Kufites, an organization, Christians United for Israel. I'm involved with them. 
I did spend some time with loaves and fishes. Uh, we're, we're here to help everybody. The, and, and we're also starting an organization, the Friendship Circle, which is to help autistic children, have people visit them once a week, and we're going to do it for our, all different religions. And all different not just your congregants. Just, no, 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 not even Jews, ja Japanese, any color, any, any creed. We help everybody. Do you suggest to congregants, there's some man or woman who's a regular attendee, someone who's your friend, and they say to you, what way of service should I be to a community? What advice would you give them? You see, God gives you whatever you need to serve Him. One of the Ten Commandments is, Thou shalt not covet. Not to be jealous of someone else. How could you not be jealous of someone else? It's against the human grain. We get jealous. But God gives you whatever you need to fulfill your mission. So if God gave you a good pen, use your pen. If God gave you money, gave you an estate, or gave you wealth, use the wealth. Whatever, if you know building, if you know construction, if you know writing, everyone has talents. Use those talents to help your community. So there's no one answer fits all. You're asking, what would you tell a newcomer to start? There's no, there's no one shoe fits all. Everybody is unique. So Everybody is a world for himself. So you would, you would base your advice on your knowledge of that person in the moment? Yes, I would say, tell me, tell me more about yourself. Can you give me an example of some advice along that line of the service that some, someone you're in relationship with asked you to advise them what way they should be of service? What did you say to them? The last person or the t person before that that asked you a question along that line. I had one lady. She has very good and special ed. And she's a very popular person. She knows people. She has connections. And I'm working together with her to develop this friendship circle program I mentioned to you before. Okay. What, uh, what does tikkun olam mean? Tikkun olam is a fancy name for Mashiach. Okay. Tikkun olam is for perfecting the world. And we say it in the prayer of Olenu, telling the whole world that God is our God. That's tikkun olam, what we spoke earlier in this interview. To tell the world that there's a God, that's tikkun olam. If you say the word tikkun olam, it's in the prayer of Olenu. It says, L'taken olam b'malchus shin dalad yud, with the kingdom of God. Tikkun olam, it's, it became a fancy word, because people are afraid of religious words, Moshiach, God, GWD, they're afraid, it's too religious, it's... So tikkun olam, but tikkun olam is just a cover for Moshiach, God, everything we spoke about up till now. Please tell me what tshuva means. Tell us what tshuva means. Tshuva means, the, the, actually some people translate it repentance. The Christians say repentance, turning over a new leaf. Tshuva means return, revealing your true soul, coming back to your true self. When you return to your true self, there's a great passion in us burning for God. It's a fire. It's a fire that's burning, yearning for Godliness. When we don't find it, we do other crazy stuff. But Tshuva means to return to your true self and let your soul burn with a great passion for God. Do you have a favorite biblical, biblical or Talmudic quote or principle that you could explain to us today? Something that guides you personally? There's so many of them. You could select it to, down to just a few.